Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Wednesday, December 5th, 2012. Our first story is from the world of biotechnology. Here on Brainstorm, we've discussed microbial fuel cells before. They capture electrons as bacteria breaks down organic substances, like sewage. Now a scientist from the Netherlands has put a twist on that by creating the plant microbial fuel cell. As you may know, plants have a symbiotic relationship with many kinds of soil bacteria. And just as with a standard microbial fuel cell, these interactions result in the release of electrons. So carefully placed electrodes in soil could draw on this as a source of power. Current systems based on this are producing 0.4 watts of power per square meter, but as the technology develops, it could be as high as 3.2 watts. Meaning, it could be competitive and economically feasible on multiple scales. Small rooftop setups, useful for remote areas and households in developing countries, or large-scale power generation by implementing these systems in natural marshlands. Crucial to the efficiency of the plant microbial fuel cell is the placement of the electrodes. Effective setup can greatly boost power output and reduce the amount of materials used. If successfully developed, it could be more favorable compared to solar or wind energy. These soil electrodes would be undetectable to the average person and could be placed in a variety of environments. For most climates, this would probably be the natural growing of grass and other plants. However, warmer climates could likely draw electricity from growing rice, even at small household scales. Development will continue, studying the interaction between different plants and microbe species, and their effect on power generation. Next is news from the world of technology. One of the major goals of those developing new technological devices is flexibility. To that end, a team from the University of Pennsylvania have been developing a way to make flexible circuits. Their semiconductor of choice was cadmium selenide to replace the generally brittle silicon. You see, silicon's fragility isn't the only hindrance to flexible circuitry, but also the high temperatures in which it is generally deposited. So the scientists created an ink-like cadmium solution that can be worked with at room or mild temperatures. This allowed them to use flexible plastics as their circuit substrate. The nanocrystals within the ink had specialized molecular chains, called ligands, attached to them to increase conductivity. With these particular ligands attached, the cadmium selenide is actually 22 times more conductive than silicon, meaning speed and functionality will not be sacrificed for flexibility. Using this, complex circuits can be constructed with relative ease by creating several layers. Electrodes on a flexible substrate connected by the cadmium-based circuitry and using gold as conductive pathways between the layers. The team has already created crucial components needed for modern electronic circuits. As an added bonus, the circuits only require low voltage to operate, meaning effective and flexible portable electronics are possible in the future. We end with an update from the world of medicine. As we've discussed on Brainstorm before, bacteria adapting resistance to conventional antibiotics is becoming a major public health concern. It has led to the evolution of very dangerous pathogens, resistant to most, if not all, forms of treatment. So there is research going into alternative ways of dealing with bacterial infections. Some examples are chemicals that affect bacterial systems in a fundamental way, so they cannot easily adapt. Another approach is using highly engineered viruses that will only infect bacteria that humans target. Researchers in Singapore are taking a different approach by examining how bacteria communicate. Although bacteria are commonly considered the simplest form of life, they are still capable of cooperation. One example of this cooperation is the formation of biofilms, which are multi-layered structures of bacteria, often more resilient against harsh environments and antibiotics. Another example is the relatively new discovery of quorum sensing, which are chemical messages that bacteria produce and receive as rudimentary form of communication. Study of quorum sensing is still preliminary, but research shows that these signaling molecules can activate the virulence genes of bacteria once they reach a certain threshold. These researchers studied bacteria engineered to either not produce a certain molecule or its receptor. Both modified strains were less motile, produced less harmful enzymes, and were less likely to form biofilms. This reinforces the idea that quorum sensing can act as a signal to bacteria, allowing them to cooperate in an infection. Which leads researchers to think bacteria could be pacified by interfering with the signaling system, as an alternative to killing the bacteria with antibiotics. 
Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.